Hello everyone! Uh, this game was played in 2003 and uh, this is, uh, well, six years after Kasparov's famous match against IBM's Deep Blue. Uh, this is uh, Gary Kasparov vs. Uh, Fritz X 3D. And, uh, well, it was a pretty unique match as Kasparov never had any board or pieces in front of him. Uh, he had special goggles and uh, he saw a 3D floating board in front of him. And, uh, well, he didn't move any pieces, he just uh, set the moves and the voice recognition program uh, recognized uh, the move he wanted to play and the move was made automatically. And uh, Kasparov got $150,000 to participate in this match. If he drew the match, he would get an additional $25,000, uh, $25, and if he won the match, he would get an additional uh, $50,000. So this is uh, game three. Uh, in game one, they drew the game. Uh, game two, Kasparov lost. Uh, it was one of his uh, greatest blunders of his career. And uh, this is game three, so the outcome of the match is on the line and uh, Kasparov uh, really needs to win this one uh, to get back into the match. Uh, the match consisted of four games. Uh, so let's see this uh, game. Kasparov is white and the Fritz X3D is, uh, has the black pieces. We have knight to f3, knight f6, c4, uh, e6, knight to c3, d5, uh, d4 and c6, the semi-slav defense. And uh, Kasparov goes uh, e3. And in round one, uh, well, Fritz X3D uh, played the knight b to d7. Uh, but here he played uh, a6, probably to avoid any additional preparation by Kasparov. And uh, here Kasparov actually played c5. As he thought that, uh, well, uh, I, I've seen a couple of interviews with Magnus Carlsen where he says that it's uh, it's quite strange that Kasparov lost his match against the Deep Blue because at uh, in 1997 computers were weren't really strong enough to defeat Kas to defeat Gary Kasparov and uh, well one of the reasons Kasparov lost that match was that uh, he played the tactical lines against against uh, IBM's Deep Blue and here he goes for c5 so uh, he's going for a close strategical position as the general belief is computers really suck at positions like this. Uh, so knight b to d7 and b4 expanding on the queen side. Uh, a5 is played and now b5. Uh, we have e5 and uh, queen to a4. Kasparov threatens to capture this pawn on c6. Queen to c7 defending and now bishop to a3. Uh, we have e4, uh, knight uh, to d2 and uh, bishop to e7. And uh, Kasparov pushes b6. And uh, well, uh, already this is uh, quite a quite a positional achievement by Kasparov, as he has this beautiful uh, pawn chain from f2 to b6, and uh, after black moves with the queen, for example, queen to d8. Now it's only a matter of time before Kasparov uh, captures this a a5 pawn. You can't really defend this pawn. Uh, Kasparov goes h3, not allowing any knight g3, knight g4 ideas, uh, castles, and knight to b3 going for that a5 pawn. Uh, bishop to d6 and now rook to b1. He's not in a hurry to capture it, that pawn isn't going anywhere. Uh, bishop back to e7. Uh, we have knight to a5, uh, knight to b8, uh, bishop to b4, uh, queen to d7, uh, rook to b2, uh, queen to e6, and uh, as you can see in this position, Fritz uh, doesn't really have a clear plan. He's just uh, man maneuvering his pieces left and right. Uh, queen to d1, uh, knight f to d7, a3, uh, queen to h6, and knight back to b3. And now, okay, Kasparov uh, won this a5 pawn, and uh, his next part of the plan is uh, to push this a pawn uh, all the way to a6, and then well, after the exchange happens, uh, b captures on a6, then he will have a passed uh, b pawn. So, bishop to h4, uh, queen to d2, adding additional protection to f2. Uh, we have knight to f6, and now king to d1. Kasparov wants to shift his king all the way to the queen side. Uh, bishop to e6, Kasparov plays king to c1, uh, rook to d8, uh, rook to c2, uh, knight b to d7, and king to b2. And uh, the king is, well, completely safe here, as uh, there is no... Uh, Fritz doesn't have any chances of breaking this pawn chain. Uh, knight to f8, a4 is played, knight to g6, a5 by Kasparov, uh, knight back to e7, and now Kasparov pushes h, uh, a6. Uh, the bishop here is uh, defending this pawn, so the rook cannot capture it, so b captures on a6, 
and knight to a5, now blocking this a pawn, and now Kasparov has created this passed b pawn. We have uh, rook d to b8, uh, g3, uh, bishop to g5, uh, bishop to g2, now getting the other rook into the game, uh, queen to g6, uh, king to a1, king to h8, uh, knight to a2, bishop to d7, uh, bishop to c3, uh, knight to e8, knight to b4, and, uh, well, Kasparov is uh, almost ready to grab this a6 pawn, and black doesn't really have anything to play for. Uh, no plan seems uh, seems like a good plan uh, for Fritz. King back to g8, now rook to b1, uh, bishop to c8, trying to protect that a6 pawn, uh, rook to a2, bishop to h6, uh, bishop to f1, now also attacking the a6 pawn, uh, queen to e6, queen to d1, Knight to f6 and now queen to a4 and now this c6 pawn is attacked three times So bishop to b7 defending it and now knight captures on b7 rook captures on b7 and uh, Knight captures on a6 and okay Kasparov once again is up a pawn and now well He has a, a, a very clear plan here. Uh, he will double up rooks on the a file and then well uh, Simply exchange pieces and push this b pawn to victory uh, queen to d7 Queen to back to c2, king to h8, black doesn't really have anything to play for here. And uh, here Kasparov played rook to b3, and uh, in this position both uh, both uh, Fritz x3d and the team operating the program decided that they will resign this game. As, uh, well, black black doesn't have anything to play for here, and the white's, play, white, white's plan is completely straightforward. Uh, simply double up rooks on the a file, exchange everything, uh, all the rooks, and then push the b, b pawn to victory. So they didn't see any reason to continue this game, and uh, well, this is game three. Kasparov really strangled, <laughs> strangled his opponent, the Fritz X 3D. And I remember the first time I saw this game, I remember this huge pawn chain, and uh, well, uh, I actually never forget this game. It's a, it's a very nice game, especially. Uh, you know for, for positional chess so yeah uh, the, the the fourth game was also drawn so uh, the first and fourth game of the match were drawn uh, Fritz won the second game and Kasparov won the third game this one and uh, Kasparov won the additional $25,000 for drawing the match against Fritz, Fritz X3D so yeah this is the game I do hope you enjoyed it uh, if you would like I will also show you the game that Kasparov lost against Fritz X3D uh, that's considered uh, to be one of the greatest blunders of his career. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Kaplan Keith, uh, Sachin Sai Potipiredi, and uh, Randall Ruth uh, for your contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.